The De Jong brothers were raised with the stories of indigenous struggle. Metal's always like super political with its lyrics and stuff. There are a lot of Māori that are really into metal, you know, and it's like, it was kind of weird for us to be the first ones to do it, honestly. Along with their friend Ethan Trenbath, they've found a winning way to get their political message across in a genre not usually associated with Māori music. It feels like you're doing a haka, honestly. It's like that same, you know, just riled up feeling you get when you're just going absolutely crazy doing it. The trio who attend Ruakaka School and hail from Waipu say they've got the whole Northland town into thrash metal. Well, we like to think of it as the heavy metal centre of the universe. They're all into metal. The butchery loves metal. The lady on the scooter loves metal. The dude who sells oysters loves metal. The lady going shopping loves metal. And even the cows love metal. So we've got animals loving metal in Waipu. It's pretty awesome. The De Jong brothers are from Ngāti Pukiao and Te Arua is their iwi. They're proud to showcase Te Reo Māori and the history of our lands. You know, it's really valuable for Māori here in New Zealand because uh, a lot of uh, kids that I know at, at school and stuff, they, their parents don't necessarily know much about their whakapapa or their history or anything like that. So it, it's really good to be able to learn that from, from the old man. <laughs> and the old man, the boy's father, Neil De Jong, he learnt the oral history from his grandmother. You know, when I was a kid, my grandmother used to tell me stories. And, you know, she'd often tell the same stories. And it's funny, when you're a teenager, you always go, oh, oh Dad, is this one again? Um, but, you know, I mean, we do it when we, like, when we drive ever, we drive south, we drive down to um, Kitty Kitty Door, we'll go, you know, past Rangiriri. And I'll always say to the boys, oh, here's Rangiriri. And, you know, it looks like nothing, because you're just driving along the road, and there's a couple of, you know, lumps on the hill. But, you know, when you relate it to the story of Rangiriri, and you can say, well, those lumps on the hill, they're actually the remains of the fortifications that were done. And you can see how that the river's on this side and the swamp's on that side. And that's why they chose this place to put the pa to stop the British. Mm. And then the kids are interested. A couple of lumps in a paddock are now, you know, have some kind of meaning. So the kids know now when we drive down through there and through Rangiriri that that's what that is, you know. So... At 12 and 14, the boys set a goal to play in Europe, and at 15 and 17, their dream is turning into a reality. The Berlin-based music agency Das Machine has signed them for three years and opened the door to festivals across the world. Ruana Te Whenua, the group's hit song about the land, has snagged over 815,000 views on Facebook. It's uh, about me and Lewis of Tupuna who, who fought at Gate Pa um, defending Tauranga Moana from the, from the British who were coming there to pretty much um, stop them thinking for themselves and, and establish a big British colony. Oh, yeah.